Welcome back to Eno Eseria. Last time, I remember, what began as something, a normal school day, just turned into something else. Continuation of the hospital dream. I'm dreaming. It's that dream again. I've broken down crying in that gray hospital room. It's the continuation of my usual dream. You know why? I don't want any more of the people around me to die. Please, anyone, at least Kelly, at least say Kelly. My prayer rings down the hallway. The lamp of the operating room in front of me is still red. I could do nothing but clench my fists and pray as hard as I can. Hard enough to perhaps even reach God. A mysterious voice rings through my mind. Who are you? What are you talking about? My wish? For Kaori to live? I don't care who you are. I'll do anything if it'll save Kaori and nobody else has to die. What should I do? How can I say Kaori? I desperately beseech the voice in my heart. Yes, so say Kaori, I beg you! The equivalent has changed, of course. I don't understand what he means. But if it will save Kari, then I'll do anything. I don't care what happens to me. Save Kari! If you save her, then I'll... I'll... I scream desire within my heart. strong impact and though my head has been pierced. That's right, it's that voice. I remembered it all, the contract which I bound long, long ago. The memories that were sealed in the depths of my heart resurface. That's right. I still haven't fulfilled that promise. As soon as I understand, I pass out, the light is swallowed by darkness. It's chilly. I can smell grass and feel the ground under my back. Huh? It seems like I was thrown somewhere and was knocked out. My body's stiff and it's hard for me to move. I become exhausted just trying. My eyelids are so heavy that they feel like they're made out of iron. Even though I'm conscious, it's a long time before I can even manage to move a finger. My whole body feels like it belongs to someone else. What happened? I don't remember anything since being enveloped by the light at the shrine after that severe headache I... Ah! I muster the effort to wrench my eyes open. A dark force is reflected in my thinly opened eyes. Behind the shrine? I have no idea how I even got here. 
I have no memory of it whatsoever. A gentle warm wind is blowing. Huh. Isn't it winter right now? My senses gradually return to me. I begin to sense something wrong in the wind that's touching my skin. It's not cold. This isn't a winter wind. <laughs> my right hand is gripping something. But I can't move my arm or even turn my head. I'm unable to confirm what the thing is. Oh god. My character is reliving Fantasy Star 2. What is this? I feel a mysterious sensation, like heat flowing into my body from my right hand. This hand of mine is glowing red! <laughs> Along with a slight pain, a strange sound rings in my head. Still? I feel uneasy. It's dangerous. I shouldn't be here. I feel like something is warning me of that. Damn it. Move! I somehow managed to move my cracking, my creaking body and stand up. Good. I must just be really exhausted. But where should I go? Oh, that's right. Cody. Cody! I look around me. Cody is nowhere to be seen. And this? Definitely isn't any place I recognize. I have to find her. Cody! Ah! I try to start running, but quickly trip and fall. My body still isn't moving how I want it to. <clears throat> Through the ground, I can sense footsteps approaching. Maybe falling down was actually a lucky break for me. I get up again and head in the direction of the footsteps. I hear grass being trampled. Without a doubt, someone is walking towards me. Cody? I call out, but there's no response. The sound keeps getting closer. I am constantly go. Something pushes its way through the bushes, and a single silhouette appears. It isn't Cody. It's a girl of about my own age. However, she looks really weird, and what on earth are those black wings on her back? Well, I should try talking to her. I approach the girl. Say, the moment I start speaking, a chill runs through my whole body. Her face is as pretty as a doll's, but her eyes have the same artificial coldness. I used to re recall TV specials about ghosts, and I shiver. This girl is really right here, but anyway, I need to ask. <laughs> huh? Her words are unfamiliar. Having tried speaking to her in Japanese, I'm caught by surprise. Suddenly, a red light envelops the girl. <laughs> what? The girl seemed to be in pain. I can clearly tell from the way she's clawing at her hair that something is wrong. Hey! Hold on! Just so I try to rush over to her. Her pain cries stop. She turns and stares directly at me. W what? She draws nearer to me with light footsteps. The girl rocks, rocks. The girl walks right into me. At that moment, I notice something unbelievable. Yeah, and that's what my character looks like. Something cold pierced to my abdomen. The girl. She's holding. A sword? I feel as though the heat flowing into my body from my right hand has been flowing into the girl's sword. It's a sickening feeling. Suddenly I begin to see everything clearly. My strength is melting away. 
could it be that I'm dying? It's like those random street killings you hear about on TV. I never thought something like that would happen to me. My mind is drifting far away. If I pass out here, I die. Oh, Cody, I still have to... Cody! With great difficulty, I look toward the sky. In my blurry vision, I can see the moon and something else. A bird at this time of night. Against the cold, pale moon, I can sing a winged silhouette. What is it? It's too big to be a bird. <laughs> Suddenly, the girl pulls her sword out of my side and leaves back. She branches her sword towards the sky. <laughs> Unable to hold back my nausea, I vomit. <laughs> There's a lot of blood mixed with the vomit. I'm in so much pain that I can't even ride around. Unable to move even the slightest bit anymore, I can do nothing but stare at the two figures. A nimble white flash of light flutters through the slightly clouded night sky. She swoops down, a girl with pure white wings. This girl has wings too. <laughs> it's that unfamiliar language again. She said something, but I have no idea what. Her long azure hair sways in the wind. The moonlight makes her pale skin look even ever. Her long azure hair, even though that doesn't look like a bit of blue, sways in the wind. The moonlight makes her pale skin look ever whiter. Her hands hold a sword that looks far too big for her. Brandishing her sword should be throwing her off balance, but she holds it beautifully. <laughs> huh? Seeing the girl with the sword, the black winged girl, lays behind me. The speed and length of her jump are inhuman. I'm in more pain than I've ever experienced before, but I'm keeping myself conscious to watch the spectacle occurring in front of me. I think Muttering something, the girl springs forward in a cloud of dust. She's even faster than the other girl. The first time I've seen a human move faster than my eyes can follow. Well, you're definitely not watching Dragon Ball, that's for damn sure. In an instant, the white winged girl flies into the dark winged girl and nonchalantly swings. Swing. Yeah. You, know you know I'm partially tired right now. In an instant, the white-winged girl flies into the dark-winged girl and nonchalantly swings her sword down. <laughs> Why do I ever do these parts earlier? Beyond me. The black-winged girl just barely manages to parry the amazingly fast sword swing. The moment the black-winged girl shakes off the attack, the white-winged girl bursts into the bright light. <laughs> she spreads her wings and takes flight. The black winged girl spreads her own wings in response. Jambara. <laughs> the two girls slash at each other in midair. He's really watching a chambara happening. The white winged girl makes a fast cut and the black winged girl somehow manages to parry it and strike back. The strike is easily deflected by the white winged girl. In turn, she counterattacks. The white winged girl swings her huge sword and one finally drives her opponent back. The black winged girl is clearly inferior. She's flung back and her stance breaks. I've seen a similar mid-air duel in a movie before, but the battle in front of my eyes seems far more intense and real. Two winged girls dueling under the moonlight like this is absurd no matter how you think about it. 
Oh, sure, dude. you never seen anime before. <laughs> but even so, the events playing out before my eyes are extremely good. Come on, Snip. Let me the time she tried to see, she found that this girl in her hatch suit, same manner. That almost sounds German, doesn't it? That's why if you've never, if you've ever heard of um, the theme song of um, Attack on Titan, Japanese really know how to do German really good. Like they they know how to make they know how to curve that voice just to make it sound authentically German almost. That's why it's reminding me. The black winged girl lands on the ground, brandishes her sword, and speaks words that sound almost like a song. Hey, Oh, that's invocation. The moment she sees her opponent's movement, the white winged girl thrusts her hand for it and also mutters something. <laughs> the answer she finished murmuring, the temperature of the surrounding air falls. Invocation. Huh? What the? It's getting... No, it's dropping too far. The chill is so strong that my head feels like it will split open. It's so intense that it feels closer to pain than cold. Amazingly, the black wing girl instantly stops speaking as though she is frozen. She quickly recovers from her frozen state but her stance is completely broken. Without letting that opportunity pass, the white winged girl flies towards her. The white wing on her back glows strongly. She looks so beautiful as she swings her sword and captivated by her. The black winged girl tries to restore her stance and raise her sword, but she's too late. A white flash. The only thing that reaches my ears is the sound of something being cut. The black wing girl. Ribs in pain. In the next instant, a red stain begins to spread over her. I know it's a rising pain. What? A strange silence falls. Two winged girls have flown into the sky and crossed swords. The white winged girl won, and the black winged girl lost. <coughs> Excuse me. Even though I saw it myself, I can't feel. I can't help but feel like I've been watching a television drama. The white winged girl begins turning into golden particles that start to disperse. What? Not only is this unrealistic. It's violating the very laws of physics. It's an RPG, dude. She died? No, she was killed. The girl loses her form as she turns into golden particles. She has turned into EXP. <laughs> and, then the, and then the pierced girl completely disappears. Her sword, which had fallen to the ground, disappears at the same time. I don't care about that. No. I'm going to kill you too. I feel awfully calm thinking about it. I die from blood loss? Will I be killed by the girl in front of me? I explain the black wing girl erased by the white wing girl. The girl in front of me may well be a murderer and she's still holding her sword. I'm already sweating profusely from the pain, but I now break out in a different kind of cold sweat. The girl casts her gaze at me. Running away is probably impossible. <laughs> Frankly, I'm at my limit just staying conscious. My focus is all re -blurring. Only natural. I've lost this much blood. The 
girl turns slowly toward me, and I see her take flight. She diff she's definitely coming to finish me off. Well, I'm turning to golden dust and disappear as well. My thoughts are vague, and I almost don't care what happens. My clouded head has already lost the ability to reason. Uh, but this girl is trying to save me. My consciousness fades away. I've heard that time passes slowly right before you're about to die. Maybe that's happening to me now. I feel presence right next to me. I muster my strength and open my eyes. The girl spreads her wings and floats down in front of me. Azure is a strange color. It's like blue purple. Lit by the moonlight, the girl has a strangely divine presence. Could she be an angel? She was just fighting. Angels don't have swords, do they? The girl in front of mine seems more beautiful and pure than anything of this world. Like we hadn't seen that right now. And we finally reached chapter one. The spirits of a, fl a flute world. Place unknown. Ugh. What happened? My thoughts are muddled and I feel strangely heavy. And I'm now realizing that my body won't listen to me at all. <laughs> my body won't move. <sighs> Do I need to go to work soon? My head is in, in <laughs> my head is in such confusion that I can't think straight. Sensation gradually returns to my numb body. Huh. I must be tired. That was a really weird dream I just saw though. I finally decide to roll over and go back to sleep. Just doing that causes a grating pain in my whole body. The bed I'm in is slightly hard. The blanket feels somewhat stiff and rough. I'll need to dry it properly next time. Suddenly a soft hand presses against my forehead. Callie, I'll get up soon. I strain my voice. My throat hurts too. Cursing to myself, I open my eyes little by little. I can't seem to focus. I blink repeatedly, and my hazy vision is gradually restored. I see the fuzzy outline of a person. A girl. Is it Cody? Sorry, Cody. I can't feel sick right now. 
figure becomes clear. Damn it. I'm making Cody worry again. What? Huh? It's not Cody? No, the girl sitting next to my bed isn't Cody. She has brown hair and entrancing green eyes. There's a worried expression on her well-featured face. Her eyes are a rare color. Huh, I've never seen her before. But she's pretty. She stares at my face worriedly as my incoherent thoughts ramble on. Ned, you're not happy yet. The girl speaks. Her voice is beautiful, but I don't understand her words. Hi. I've never met this girl before, and she's speaking a mysterious language. This is a little too much for my head to process after just waking up. Oh. The light shining in my room. The light shining into the room is so bright that I reflectively cover my eyes with my arms. I know it's a reflective, reflexively moon. Like I said, I'm partially tired. When I do, a towel slides off my forehead. Did this girl put it there? And I'm sorry. The girl's expression shifts slightly in response to my words. Where is this? Who are you? I speak to her with pauses between my words. The girl blinks in surprise. Seems like she doesn't understand. From what I can tell, just by running my eyes around, this room doesn't seem like a hospital. This isn't my house either. So, just where am I? We, we left this I would think she's saying, are you okay? I am tired. <laughs> I didn't mention that. I am tired. By the time I'm recording this, it's like 4... 4... 4.50 to almost 5 o'clock. So, I am very tired. I'm working too, so that could probably be part of why I'm screwing up so much. I'll probably stop right here after this part. Or after this line, or after something. My words probably won't be understood, but I smile as I speak. Step. I'm not just making a creepy face, am I? <laughs> I think I managed to convey my feelings. The girl brings her hand to her chest and sides, as though it's relieved. Although I'm only guessing from her appearance, I at least feel safe for now. I still... I'm still... Yeah. I am actually tired. I at least feel safer now. I am still really disoriented and very tired. She replaces the blanket that I had shaken off. Wind blows in from the window. The curtains flutter, and I smell a faint smell of soap from the girl. Picks up a pitcher, pours some water into a wooden cup on a nearby desk, and presents the cup to me with both hands. What I'm gathering is, would you like a drink? 
Or would you like some water? She's asking me whether I want to drink the water. I'm thirsty, so I much appreciate the offer. I reach out without hesitation. Huh? I want to accept it, but I'm not able to sit up. I can't muster any strength at all. The girl whispers in my ear, puts both arms around me, and slowly lifts me to a sitting position. She's pretty strong. I'm freshly surprised at how easily this girl can hold me up. The girl holds out the cup and brings it to my mouth. Drink. Extremely gradually, she tilts the cup towards me. I drink it little by little. I can feel the moisture spreading throughout my entire parched body. <clears throat> After some time, I finish drinking the cup dry. The girl lays me back down to rest. Thank you. Ah, uh, that's right. After I speak, I remember that she won't understand me. I bow my head slightly and smile. The girl smiles back at me. She places the cup on me. She places the cup on a small bedside table and picks up the water pitcher again. The girl makes a gesture of pouring water into the cup, suggesting that I can drink it whenever I'm feeling thirsty. Thank you. I know she won't understand, but I can't help but thank her anyway. The girl smiles in response. It's a very kind smile. I nod, and the girl once again smiles. She picks up a handbell. <laughs> She probably saying is, if you need anything, just read the, just ring this bell. She points to herself with one hand and shakes the bell with the other. My translation is, if you need anything from me, ring this bell. I'll come to you. Herself and the bell. It seems I'm supposed to call her with it. I know several times. The girl smiles and starts to get up, but then she stops. She leans towards me and mutters something. Yes, sir. She's telling me to take care of myself. She rubs her head worriedly. It's an odd ticklish feeling, but I feel a mysterious sense of security in Bell. She whispers something and stands up. She excuses herself and slowly walks out of the room. Before closing the door, the girl bows deeply one more time. I try to bow back while laying down. The girl leaves the room, still smiling. Yeah, I think now's a good time for me to drop a save. Like so. I didn't drop a save. I'm in a daze, and I am tired. So I'm actually going to drop this save. Like so. And chapter one is called The Spirits of a Finite World. I couldn't read it because the, um, sometimes the text is just weird to read, but from what I can tell, we have cleared chapter, we have, well, not chapter, we have cleared the first of many chapters to come, which was the prologue. We finally cleared the prologue. We have finally met the girl with the white wings, and now we are here in the in chapter one, the spirits of a finite world. What's going to happen until then? Oh, well, we'll find out next time with more of Ienno Eseria. And probably I'll do it much earlier and being a bit more awake. <laughs> See you in the next part. Thanks for watching.